In this AB grow comparison, I'm going to take a look at uh, one of the standard flies and blurple lights versus the Spider Farmer SF1000. To begin, let's take a quick look at the lights. As we can see, the Spider Farmer lights have the newer style LEDs at the bottom, and they've also got uh, a mix of different color LEDs. I'm going to use Sense to monitor the power. As you can see, this one is 99 with it on and goes down to 6 watts with it off. So that's a total of 93 watts used. The Spider Farmer has a dimmer on the front, or optionally you can turn it off and just turn it on full anytime you supply power. It does have a remote connection as well, that's what the little phone jacks are for. Going over to the Flies and Light. This one has two different modes, Grow and Bloom, as you, or correction, Veg and Bloom, as you can see on the side switches. Total power use there right now with the both on is 322, and then uh, when I turn them both off, it goes back down to the six watts for a total of 300 and uh, what's the math there? 316. So a big use in power consumption has changed between the two and whether or not this is a fair comparison, uh, with new technology, I'm thinking it is. My nutrient mix is gonna be the standard one that I use for my grows everywhere and I'm gonna use reverse osmosis water with uh, the standard peas, beans, and clover. All of these seeds are going to go into a net cup filled with perlite and I'm going to do the same amount of seeds in both. Although I'm not measuring germination so if I do get different germination rates I'm going to swap the seeds around to make sure that the comparison is fair otherwise it might skew nutrient levels and other things. I'm not going to be using my standard nursery grower this time around instead I'm going to germinate them right inside the experiment. Once I got the seeds all put in I'm going to set up the irrigation and we'll turn on the lights and we'll monitor it as it goes through its growing phase. Here you can see the two setups side by side and uh, the lights I've done my best to get the bottom of the LEDs to be the same distance between both they are measured. All right let's watch these things grow side by side. Here's a about 45 seconds of a month of growing. Now I know this isn't the proper way to meter light, but it's all I've got and I'm not interested in buying a big expensive light meter. So I'm just going to take my cell phone and put it on the top of the pail, about halfway up where the grow is happening and then on the top of my tube. And I'm going to do the same for both just so you can see the light comparison difference. Based on those numbers, if they are accurate, they're pretty close between the flies and light and the spider farmer. Now that the grow wing is finished, let's take a look at the results and see what you guys think. This is the flies and grow, goes just about up to the light for the bean and the spider farmer, it's uh, well past by about a foot past the top of the light. There is some damage leave on here and if you stay tuned till the end, you're going to find out why. There's the two setups finished side by side for a quick comparison. And now it's time to take these bean stalks off the wire that they've climbed up and pull out this whole grow and compare the two plants side by side. This is the spider farmer bean plant and I'm having some difficulty getting this thing out of pail because the root is, or the root ball is pretty impressive actually. I did use great white as well twice in this grow just to uh, get the roots, make sure that the roots are nice and pearly white. I'll do the same for the flies and bean plant, pull that thing out of here as well. Now here's the two side by side with me standing and holding them up. You can tell that the spider farmer bean plant got quite a bit taller than the other one and the two plants looking at them side by side. Both are looking pretty much the same. A little bit of nutrient deficiency on the top of one. Taking the beans out and comparing the two of them side by side. Another nice set of roots and we'll put them down so we can see the top view of both. And the one on the left here is the flies in, and the one on the right is the spider farmer. Both look pretty good, but I would say the Flyson is a bit better here of a plant. Last but not least, let's take out the Clover and take a peek at them. There's the Spider Farmer one, 
And here's the flies in one, blur up a light, both look really good as well. And we'll lay them out side by side again so you can see the two. And there is the comparison of all of them side by side. Everything on the left is the flies and everything on the right is the spider farmer. Now I gotta say I was a little surprised at the results of some of this stuff here until I took a look at the nutrients in the pails. I was thinking that the flies and was the clear winner, but after seeing what the pH levels are left over, as you can see the TDS is a little bit higher in the pail on the right, which is a spider farmer. But look at how acidic the pH is measured there. So I think the damage that we had seen on the one plant is actually caused by the excess in pH or the pH being so extremely acidic. I'm going to say this test is probably a little bit inconclusive, but that also being said, for 100 watts versus the 300 and whatever it was there for the difference of power consumption, I have gone ahead and changed my grow to the Spider Farmer lights. And if all of a sudden this does not work out for me and I do go back to the flies and light, I will be sure to leave a comment down below. Speaking of the comments, if you do take the time to comment, even if it's a simple hello or a hi, I do take time to read your comments and I do appreciate them. So thanks. If you like more tests like this, be sure to stick around. They will show up here as I'm done with the test. Right now I'm going to be starting a master blend versus a general hydroponics nutrients next.